As you can see, Jared Gordon, very kindly, has given up a bit of time to come and join us. How are you, mate? You well? I'm well. How are you? Very well, indeed. Talk to me about the excitement of getting to throw down at Madison Square Garden on the 30th anniversary show. New York, New York, born and raised, city molded me, and it's epic to be here. I'm super excited, and I'm like so eager to get in there. Obviously, you're gonna have a lot of friends and family in the building supporting you. Does that bring extra pressure knowing that they're all coming to see you, they've parted ways with the hard-earned money to support you? No, actually, it drives me. Um, this is the easy part, right? Getting in there. Yep. Obviously, the nerves come, but this is what I was put here to do and I'm gonna represent for us and I've been through so much worse. <clears throat> I um, remember I got arrested for a home invasion robbery, felony battery, and going in front of the judge and wondering if I was gonna go away for the rest of my life was like a little more frightening. So like when I get to walk out at Madison Square Garden where I uh, cause a lot of chaos and havoc yeah. in the area, would you mind sharing there, what, yeah. you, what you shared with me the other day? I was shooting heroin in Penn Station for Which a year. Station yeah. below wow. Madison Square Garden. Underneath Madison Square Garden. Wow. Um, so for me to go from the pits of hell mm. underneath the garden in the hot, steamy subway to uh, being in the garden under the lights with a W means more than you could ever imagine. That's like a kind of like a pinch yourself moment because you must look at Madison Square Garden and they're completely different as a New Yorker it's like the mecca of fight sports of course and it means so much to you but for you personally knowing what went on underneath the, the stadium to now be walking out in front of 20,000 New Yorkers it's going to be something special for you it's incredible I used to train at Hensel Gracie's which is on 30th Street like two blocks away from the garden I used to walk by it every day and look up at it and say oh one day I'm going to fight there and you know a few years later I was you know killing myself and but here I am incredible and uh, couldn't be better yeah how much I mean we speak with fighters about this all the time don't we how much is MMA martial arts saved your life it's been a huge part it's given me discipline and taught me how to be a man and you know the ups and downs of fighting have really changed me and made me a better person but it, it's a small part of my life you know in the sense where I'll move on from this eventually and I'll have to do something else, but it's given me a platform to read, you know, to help others and have people reach out to me. And but it's changed my life completely. And I owe the UFC everything I have, you know, I've, I've afforded myself a home, I have a wife, I have a dog, I have a beautiful car, all the things that you think you need that you really don't need but are nice to have. Mm. But I, you know, through fighting and my sobriety, I've, I've been able to get my family back, my friends, you know, no one wanted anything to do with me. And I can't blame them because I was killing myself and killing them um, mentally. Mm. So MMA, God, my higher power, and my sobriety has given me everything that I could ever ask for. The UFC, Dana White, Sean Shelby, all these guys, people are looking up to people like Mike, his story talk about inspirational so this is this is my life and I, I I'm living my dream well I think that people when they hear this mm. they're the ones that are going to be inspired because that is an unbelievable journey I'm sure there were some really dark times but here you are you should be so proud of yourself Jared absolutely but Saturday night mm -hmm. tomorrow night you got a tough opponent tell me how you're feeling about the matchup and ultimately what are the keys to victory I see domination in my future, Saturday night, tomorrow night. Mark is a worthy opponent. He's a silver Olympic medalist. But I think that stylistically, I match up perfectly with him. Oh, he's gonna take me down. Okay, take me down. I'm better than you on the ground. I'm gonna get up. I, I'm gonna be as stingy as possible though. I don't wanna give up cheap takedowns. I don't wanna give him anything. I want pure domination and a finish. And I know I'm better on the feet. I'm way more experienced in MMA than he is. And he's a Greco wrestler, which, is obviously a very tough sport, and but does it translate that well into MMA? He's not a freestyle wrestler. He's not a folk style wrestler. Mm. Uh, you know, upper body clinch stuff against the cage. I'll have to, you know, look yep. for that. But I've been 
I have Olympic alternates in my gym, guys that are some of the best wrestlers this country's ever seen. So I'm well prepared. I'm in the best shape of my life mentally, physically, and spiritually. Have you been frustrated with the sport recently, though? We had the fight against Paddy Pimlet, the result didn't go your way, then you had the fight with Bobby Green, that was the declared a no contest, the head class, you've been frustrated or, or is it kind of lit a fire in you to just work even harder, to turn this <clears throat> yeah. thing around? I mean, I went into a tailspin, I was very depressed, uh, I didn't really like make a plan to, but I had ideations of hurting myself, you know, I was impacted financially, mentally, and it took a toll on me because I was like, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. You know, I'm putting all this effort in and, you know, I, I don't think anyone, even his fellow countrymen think he won that fight, Patty. Uh, but good for him, man. I'm, he deserves what he, ha what he has coming to him. And like, I'm talking positive things. Mm -hmm. All the things that he's been able to accomplish, good for him, man. And I was, I was beating Bobby Green and he had bummed me. I don't know if it was Blaine or not. I'm not going to say that it was, but look at him now. He mm. just he's in the top three. Thirty three seconds knocked out Grand Dawson. That was so, amazing. Good for him too. I yeah. hope he succeeds. But I, would I fight them again? Of course. And is there a storyline for both of those fights? Yes. So when I win on Saturday night, we'll see what happens. But I want a top fifteen. I'm thirty five. I mean, I've been chomping at the bit at the top fifteen. I've been on that cusp a couple of times, and I've had setbacks. This last year, obviously being one of them. But I think. With a very dominant win this weekend in Madison Square Garden, that I'll be able to call maybe a couple of shots, and I want I, I want a top 15. I want a top 15 fight. Listen, we're looking forward to it, man. We're looking forward Thank to it. You. We can tell that you're looking forward to it as well. We can't wait for you to get in there and do your thing in front of uh, this New York crowd. Make sure you come and join us on TNT Sports and Discovery Plus for UFC 295, where Jared Gordon is going to be throwing down in the garden. Thank you, guys.